Now we're at lesson nine. We've used a lot of sensors plugged into the M5 stack, and we've also seen the M5 stack has some internal sensors. One sensor that we haven't used that's built into the M5 stack is the accelerometer. If we shake the device, it can sense how fast it's moving, what orientation it's turned in, and what direction it's also facing. Most modern phones and tablets contain an accelerometer, and we notice if we tilt our device that the screen changes also. So today we're going to be programming the accelerator and also using the random blocks to create a dice. Let's get started. Okay, here we are back in UI Flow. And this time, since we're going to be using the accelerometer, I'm going to call our project something like uh, accelerometer test. especially since we're going to be doing more than one program with the accelerometer. Now, unlike the units that we've been using, the accelerometer is a sensor that is inbuilt inside the M5 Go. So we can actually find uh, all of the blocks related to that sensor inside the hardwares. So if we look in IMU, this is where we can find a bunch of blocks related to the accelerometer. So now if we uh, choose this one, basically we want to make sure that when the device shakes or is accelerated, then we do something. So I'm going to use this one. Basically shaked on, if it shook on the x-axis of the device. Okay, so as we've done as the test code for our, some of our previous programs, we first got a readout of the sensor on the screen. So I'm sure you know how to do this already. We'll need the loop so that we can get a continuous value. We'll need a label in order to show you the value on the screen. And then we'll need to set that label to show the current value. Okay. So now if you upload your program, we can see that there's a number changing rapidly on the screen. It's staying at a few points above zero, but once we start to move it around, it goes above one and so higher. Um, in order to register a, sh a good shake that it's not too we don't need to be shaking it like crazy and also it won't be set off uh, by only a small amount of shake. I think uh, one around 1.5 uh, is a good value for us to use. So uh, what we're going to do in this particular code is change something based on whether the device uh, is shook above a certain level. So we need to compare. So we need to go into logic, get an if condition, and then use that acceleration compared with a threshold value. So we'll get our comparator here, stick it in there, copy this, stick that in the first position, and then we want a maths block. Okay, so we're gonna see if the acceleration value is above 1.5, then we'll do something. So do what specifically? Well, on a lot of our phones today, that also have accelerometers inside, people who are quite into their sports like to track their fitness they can use the accelerometer inside their phone paired with a particular app or device to count their steps. So we can also do a simple program that does a similar thing with the M5 Go. We're going to need a variable first to hold the number of steps or shakes of the device. So we could call this count. 
Okay, and then we want to set that count to zero to start off with. So we start from zero and then we can count up from that. Okay, and then of course we're going to need a label also to show the amount of steps that we have taken. Okay, so now every time that the device is shaken, accelerated above this threshold, we're going to change the count by one. And we're also going to update that label to show the current count. Now this will work, but you'll notice that the count might go up by a few points every time you shake it. Well, we want it to be a little bit more spaced out so that every time we take a step or we jog, that will we'll go up by only one, not by a few numbers. So we need to add a slight delay in there. Okay, I'll choose about 0.5 seconds. That should do it. Uh, first, we need to make sure that we choose the right label. So label one up in the corner will show uh, the acceleration and label two will show the count. Okay, let's give that a quick test. And the count goes up, but we probably want to use a bigger text on this. So we could maybe use this size maybe change the color if you want. Okay, and then we want to see if we can reset the number. Perhaps you're playing sports, doing a competition, and you want to compare with someone else. So you're going to need a way to reset the count back down to zero. So this can easily be done if we go into events, get a button press, and then when the button is pressed, we reset the count back to zero. And then also we'll need to update that label as well. So we can just copy and paste that from there. Again, we'll give that a quick test. Okay, that's working. We might want to change this text as well um, to show something like um, count maybe or a message that might say start running, something like that. Okay, and there we have a simple step counter program. Now to combine uh, random numbers like we learned in lesson seven, uh, along with the accelerometer, we can create uh, a dice that we might use in a game. So basically what we're going to do is get the value from the accelerometer as we did in the step counter program, then change the side or number of the dice as the M5 go is shaken. Now, if we look at the emojis, we have this emoji block here. And then if we go into the random block, we can't just simply put the emoji into the random block. So we're going to have to find a workaround here. What we can do is to uh, basically set a counter, a variable, we could create a variable called number, perhaps. And then we're going to change this value and then make each of these emojis that we change to a specific number uh, to be equal to a number value. So on the start, let's see, we're going to set number to be a random number between one and six.
okay and then we want to repeat um, basically repeat this forever like while the device is being shaken we want to keep changing the number and basically while it's not being shook it will just stay on the number that was last randomly generated so again we'll need the acceleration in here and we'll need a bit of logic here we're going to need to use this block and instead of and we'll use or and then we're going to use our comparator blocks so if the acceleration is more than that threshold that we used in the last part uh, 1.5 or if it's less than that particular value as well then we can randomly generate a number and remember we need to keep this inside a loop so we can keep checking so while the number is changing when we're shaking it, we're still going to need to set a value for each of our emojis. Just to make sure that it's being shaken, we can also make sure that the RGB bar lights up a nice bright color. So we can see that that acceleration is getting registered. And then if it's not being shook, we can just set the RGB bar back to black so that it doesn't show any light. Okay, now we need to compare a number and produce the equivalent emoji block for the face of the dice. So to do that, we can set an if condition. So we'll check if the number is equal to one, for instance. So we'll get our number variable get a comparator set it to 1 and then we can get our emoji to show a 1 in the middle as we would see on a dice okay now for the other numbers all we need to do is repeat these steps with using the else if part of the condition. So while we're going through this loop, the program will keep checking what is the current number and then it will display the emoji at the current number's value. So we can drag a whole bunch of else ifs in here. But in total, we're only going to need five because the final else we can get it to show the number six so let's duplicate these just changing the number each time until we have a total of five and then we also need to add the else in there. Let's zoom out a little. Okay. So basically what the else is doing is if it's none of the other numbers, then show that particular block, which will be six, the only remaining number. So now we need to create some emojis to display those different numbers. So usually on a dice, we have uh, two dots across the middle, or it could be a diagonal pattern. And then for three dots, usually we always have a diagonal pattern.
such as this. And then usually if we have four dots, they're usually shown in a square shape. Then for the five, we just add a single dot to the center. And then finally for six, we have two rows of three on each side. Now this is starting to get a little bit big, this program. It's difficult to see the whole of our program. So something we can actually do once we're happy with our emojis is just to collapse the block. And it looks a little bit like this. It's easier to see then the rest of the logic in our program and find out if we've made any mistakes. So I'll go about collapsing all of these. Okay, and now we can give this a quick test. And that works now. And there we have a nice little dice program that we can use if we're playing tabletop games or other sort of board games. You could also add extra numbers for more complicated games. Okay, that's all for this lesson. So we used the accelerometer to create a dice game and also we used it to create a step counter every time it registers an extra number. Have a think of how else we could use this accelerometer. Perhaps it could be used in your favourite sport. Let's see what you come up with. Make sure you share your ideas in the comments and if you get stuck, drop us a message and I'll see you in the next lesson.